he wants to sit up front. Well, I'm going to get started because uh, it's 7 o'clock. Brett, remind my watch is too fast. Is it 7? I'd like to start on time. But uh, before we begin, let us bow our heads in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. As we gather this evening, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings we have experienced this school year. We are grateful for all the members of the Watterson community who are so essential to our mission and to the work you have ordained for us. We ask that you bless us with wisdom as we share our vision of the future so that we may see all things with your eyes and dream as you want us to dream. We ask that you keep us focused on the gospel mission so that we can continue to shape and form the lives of the students who have been entrusted to our care. Your generosity and goodness have filled our lives. Please give us the grace to share our abundance with others. Grant us the ears to hear your call, the hands to do your work, and the heart to respond to those who are less fortunate. As always, we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for coming out tonight for this information meeting. I'm glad all of you read about it in the Waters and Wednesday News. We tried to bold highlight, not sure how else to get this information out to you. But it's all new to us as well this year. It's pretty exciting, this College Credit Plus. It has a lot of financial ramifications for you. And we are so pleased to have with us tonight Pam Allen. She's from Ohio Dominican University. And she is here to present to you information regarding this College Credit Plus program. I have been working with Pam and we here at Watterson for, for several years and she's been very good and instrumental in helping us with that dual enrollment program that we offer here. And it's been very successful. She's been the liaison and I think you will find that uh, she will be able to answer and explain to us all of those ins and outs about this College Credit Plus program. So we want to thank you, Pam, for joining us and saying yes to our invitation here. So please welcome Pam to our meeting today. Yeah. 
application process for our, um, our courses here. Uh, the governor signed this bill in the summer and is to be implemented in the fall. It's open to all students grades 7 through 12 for transcripted high school or in college credit. And it really covers both the old PSEO system <coughs> and the dual enrollment programs that you might be familiar with. <coughs> goals were to create uh, opportunities for students to uh, perhaps be remediation free. They were given, they were really created to help students uh, really become and retain that challenge and that motivation for doing well in uh, not only their high school courses but college courses and to be challenged. <coughs> they really uh, are allowing students to explore their academic interests. And it really uh, opens up the doors for students who might have had a burden of being able to pay for uh, the college tuition. Again, it's open to students grades 7 through 12. Public universities must participate, private universities may participate. Students do need to meet the admissions criteria for that university. And so every university has their own admissions criteria. Some are going to use high school GPA, some will use ACT, SAT, some will use placement testing. At Ohio Dominican, we only look at the high school GPA and the ACT score. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. A little bit. Classes can be offered, as I mentioned, at the high school taught by a qualified adjunct instructor. They can be offered at the university. They can be offered online. I want you to know that at Ohio Dominican, we're only offering the courses at the high school by a qualified adjunct instructor. We're not letting high school students come to our campus to take classes or to take them online with us. Uh, courses cannot be remedial and uh, they cannot have religious content in them as part of this program. I think that there are some potential risks and students really need to keep this in mind as they sign up for the college courses. Uh, sometimes that, uh, sometimes it sounds appealing that they can take several college courses but you have to keep in mind that students are doing the work. They have other activities that they're involved with, not just um, taking classes. And uh, it can be a little bit rigorous, and they might feel like they're a little bit um, overly challenged if they take on too much. So I think that's something to keep in mind. If they think they want to take a course on a college campus, they need to keep in mind that the schedules do not line up with high school schedules. So if they are planning a spring break or an extended holiday with um, the high school schedule in mind, that's not going to work for a, a, a university campus. And if they miss a week of classes at a, at a university, they're, they're really behind, typically. Um, so that is something that a student really needs to keep in mind. They are making a commitment to follow that university schedule as well. Um, they also need to make sure that the college credits will transfer to both out-of-state and private universities. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. We're not sure, but federal financial aid may be impacted. It may not be impacted. We're not quite sure about that yet. <coughs> Who pays tuition? Um, the private high school students that are intending to take college courses will need to apply for funding talk about that in a minute as well. The <coughs> Department of Education has set aside money for the private high school student. It will be awarded to seniors first, and then juniors, and then sophomores, and freshmen. If students don't receive funding, then the courses that are taught at the high school or at the university will be charged a reduced tuition fee. And at Bishop Watterson, we've always charged the $65 per that would be something that we would continue if for some reason the student would not receive funding. So that's not going to change. Students who choose to take
take a course on a private university campus, those that are offering college courses to high school students on a private university campus, they're allowed to charge a reduced tuition fee as well. If the student intends to take the class at a public university, they are not allowed to charge uh, any tuition. The tuition is really covered by that fund. It's also covered by their school district. Um, and it's cost shared oftentimes with the university. Books and fees are also covered by the school or cost shared with the university. However, students can be charged for parking. They can be charged for fitness center fees. There are other fees that a student could be charged for if they're taking a course at a public university on their campus. Any student at any public or private high school cannot be charged for tuition if they meet the economic disadvantage status. And you would meet with your high school counselor here, Patty, or one of the other counselors, Jamie, and they will provide a form and um, they, would, they would let us know at some point that this particular student could not be charged for tuition. Perhaps a uh, student might be interested in taking a summer class. If they're interested in taking a summer <coughs> class uh, for college credit, it's self-pay. The student or the family is responsible for the tuition, the books, the fees. Uh, some students might want to do that if they wanted to get ahead or if there's just a course that they really, really want to take over the summer, it, it, it's possible that a student might want to do that. School graduation. Um, the requirements uh, are still needing to be met for high school graduation. That doesn't change. Um, for the class of 2016 and 17, the OGT exams are still required. Uh, it does impact a little bit for the classes of 2018 and beyond. Um, and students who wish to take replacement courses, college courses at a university, would still be required in some of the subjects to take the end of the year uh, assessments. These are some of the things that they would still be required to take in terms of the end of the year, the end of the course testing, English, algebra one, geometry. Uh, Maybe waived for social science and some of the science courses. So if they took a university course, took the final exam, they might not have to take that end of the year testing at the high school. That would be Students are earning dual credit. They're earning both high school credit and college credit. The grade and the GPA appears on the high school transcript and, of course, on the university transcript. They are starting a university transcript, so the grade and the GPA will begin at that university for that particular um, student. This is just showing you the Carnegie units, um, a three or four or five semester college credit course, this is one Carnegie unit, and so forth. Now, theoretically, um, the state is saying that students could earn 15 semester credits or 30 semester credits in a year. And theoretically, I guess that's true, although it's pretty difficult for a student to do that. Have high school requirements and high school courses that they're required to take and let's say and I'm not sure how many courses a student at Bishop Watterson takes, I don't know if it's seven, seven courses. So seven, seven classes times three is 21 units and then if they're saying you could potentially earn 30 credits in a year, you would take that 21 high school credits minus 30 and you're left with nine semester credit hours. So they could potentially take nine semester credit hours in a year. So where the state is coming up with 15 and 30, I think it's idealistic. I think it's wonderful in theory. As I talk with high school counselors and principals, we're just not sure how that's possible. You know? But it could be for the, for the student who might start in the eighth grade and work their way up, you know, perhaps they'd be able to We'll see as this process.
program evolves, we'll see how this plays itself out. all the high schools to show you that these 15 and 30 credit hour pathways were possible. And so what we did is we just came up with the courses that are offered at Bishop Watterson and the courses that we offer from Ohio Dominican University. So then you can see how they line up. And so again, if you have a student who's taking history next year and they really like to earn college credit for history, well, we offer that here with Mr. Zeller. And then you take that course for college credit. So they're earning both the high school credit and they're earning the college credit for the course as well. And then for examples of 30 credit hours as well. Again, most students are not going to take all of these courses. They're going to pick and choose as they're scheduling classes for next year as a sophomore, as a senior, as a junior. So again, we needed to show you how it might be possible, but probably unlikely. <laughs> how does this impact um, graduation and the transcript? Again, high school credit from the college coursework will exceed, um, will satisfy or exceed graduation and, and uh, subject area requirements. Uh, you need to keep in mind that classes are part of their permanent record. So again, they're starting a university transcript. It does become part of their record. They do need to really consider their workload, the rigor, all of the things that they're doing after school activities, their community service. They need to keep all of that in mind as they think about signing up for college courses. The GPA of the high school and the college is impacted by this program. What if a student fails? <laughs> we don't see that very often, but it would be computed into both the high school GPA and the university on the university transcript. I think all of these options are great. The College Credit Plus, AP, IB, all of these opportunities are there for students. Um, selective admissions, universities really do look at all of these factors. One isn't necessarily better than another. They're looking at the rigor. They're looking at what the students actually took in terms of the subject. They're looking at all of the things that they um, have done throughout their high school career. So those are all things that students should keep in mind. We do recommend that students try to take four years of math and that Science and foreign languages are pretty important too. The public universities have a, a website where if you type in the public university course and you want to see how that transfers to another public university, there's a website where you can see that. For private universities, I think it's on a case-by-case -case basis and usually it's best just to contact the university for the course equivalency. I know at Ohio Dominican, uh, we tend to be very transfer friendly. Um, we do accept all of those types of transfer and credit bearing courses when we uh, look at transfer students. So we do accept um, community college, public, private, uh, college course credits, AP, IB. And we have had really good success with our courses being uh, accepted to both in state and out of state universities both public and private universities as well. The catch is students have to, do, have to do well. They need to earn at least a C or a C minus in the state of Ohio for that credit to transfer. If a student is thinking of an Ivy League university, they, um, you would be best just to contact that Ivy League university to see if they accept any transfer credit. And that's really their policy they may or may not accept transfer credit from any institution. I'm going to transition into uh, Ohio Dominican and our application process 
and then I'll open it up for questions. But many of you are familiar with Ohio Dominican. We are right down the road on Sunbury Road in Columbus, centrally located. Um, we really do value um, the student who's interested in a liberal arts education and a private education. We value them as a whole person. We try to connect them with their passion as well. We were founded in 1911 as a women's college and then transitioned into a university in 2002. We have 2,700 students from 19 different states and 13 foreign countries. Our average class size is about 16 students and the faculty student ratio is 14 to 1. We offer over 40 undergraduate academic programs, everything from accounting to software engineering, exercise science, we offer 11 graduate programs as well. Our Jump Start program, as I mentioned, started in the 1990s. And again, um, it is where students can earn both the high school credit and the college credit. The courses count towards an associate's or a bachelor's degree. The courses are completed here at Bishop Waterson High School with your <coughs> qualified adjunct. It does save you time and money, um, and the program really does offer some extra perks for students. We consider them, as I said, one of our students. So they have access to our library databases, they have access to college advising, they can receive tutoring for any course. We have a lot of online tutoring, and that would be convenient for them. Um, they have access for um, participating in campus events and guest speakers, and while they're enrolled in the course, they could attend and use our fitness center if they would like to. As I mentioned, in the state of Ohio, students need to earn a C- minus or higher for that credit to transfer to another university. Um, most of the courses will either fulfill the general education requirements or they will go toward their bachelor's degree as part of their major. Our admissions requirements needed to change this coming year. It needed to reflect the minimum admissions requirements for uh, the College Credit Plus program. So as a consequence, their overall GPA needs to be at least a 2.3, and they needed to have completed the ACT with an 18 or higher or the SAT equivalent. Let's say if the student is a sophomore or a junior and they haven't taken the ACT or the SAT, that's fine. Um, they would need a little bit higher GPA than 2.75 to participate in our program. The process is going to be one where they can submit their current um, high school transcript to us, and they would need to get the release form from the high school counselors and ask that the current transcript be sent to ODU. They can go online tonight if they would like. <laughs> Um, we have all of the courses listed that we're offering next year here at Bishop Watterson, and that is the website at ohiodominican.edu backslash participating underscore schools. You'll see all the Bishop Watterson courses that are being offered. And then they would receive um, an acceptance letter from us as long as they meet the admissions criteria. And they're going to need that admissions letter, that acceptance letter from us for this next step. And that is where you'll go to the Ohio Department of Education website, education.ohio.gov, and by April 1st, and this is also on your green sheet, um, which uh, the counselors will need back at the end of tonight, um, you'll go to the uh, Ohio Department of Education website, and they need to know that you intend to take college courses next year. It doesn't matter if you're going to take all of them here at Bishop Watterson. It doesn't matter if you're going to try an online course or if you think you might want to take a class at a university on their campus. They need to know every single college course that the student plans to take next year. You're going to put that um, on the form. It'll either be on the intent to participate form. We haven't seen it yet. It's not on the website yet. We're waiting for it or you're going to put that on the Ohio Department of Education fund
funding application form. And that will be coming available, we hope, soon as well. You'll submit the ODU acceptance letter and the uh, funding form to the Ohio Department of Education. They'll accept it by email, mail, and within five weeks, they are to send you an award letter saying how much, hopefully all, of the college course tuition will be covered for the courses that your student plans to take for next year. They haven't told us how much money they've set aside for students. They have tried to reassure us that um, they think enough uh, money has been set aside for the state of Ohio. <laughs> we'll see. The Ohio Department of Education will send you the funding award letter within five weeks, and then we just need a copy. You know, give us a copy of that award letter. You can give a copy to the high school counselors, you can give a copy to us. Um, we're going to need a copy by September 2nd. So if you do everything you know, in the next month and you receive that award letter in May, you don't have to hold on to it all summer. You can just go ahead and give us a copy. If for some reason a student does not receive funding, we are going to go back to what we've always charged, which is the $65 per credit hour for our reduced tuition. We have charged that amount since the early 1990s with all of our participating um, high schools. So that has not changed. So a three credit hour course would be $195, and a four credit hour course would be $260. And we give students and families some time to pay that. Again, you know, we're trying to be optimistic, we're hopeful that the tuition would be covered as long as the acceptance letter and the funding form is turned into the Ohio Department of Education <coughs> as soon as you can possibly turn that in. And so the forms are available on the ODE website. timeline as a summary again they can go online to our website they can apply they can work with their high school counselors to decide what courses they want to take next year they can register for those we'll send them an acceptance letter they do need to make sure by april 1st that they fill out that intent to participate all public and private high school students must fill out this form that they intend to participate they intend to take college courses next year the location doesn't matter, they just have to let the state know so that they can probably figure out their budget, let's hope. And then they'll need to fill out the funding application form. And we're hoping that that will be available from the Ohio Department of Education website, hopefully in the next month or so. We're hoping that that will be available. You'll receive an award letter, and we just need a copy of that award letter. And it will show that the student is receiving funding for their college tuition next year. Students apply for this every year. So if you've got a freshman or a sophomore, they will do this process every single year to request funding and be covered for their tuition while they're a high school student. That's the current new process anyway. It could change. <laughs> you know, if a student um, maybe decides a little bit later that they would like to take our college courses, the absolute final deadline for us to receive their online application is September 16th. We need their online application by that date. You know, we just can't guarantee that any funding would be available at that date from the state. And I realize that you may have questions after tonight. I'm here, we're here to answer questions, but do you have a question after tonight? Feel free to call myself at uh, the number listed or email me, or Kim Grilly is in our admissions office. Feel free to contact Kim and we'll try to answer your questions as best as we can. So with that, I'm going to open it up for questions.
questions. I know that uh, Patty does need the green sheet back from you. She needs um, your contact information, your signature saying yes, uh, you're here and you're interested. And you can keep the yellow um, sheet for yourself. <laughs> what questions do you have? I got a question. If they take this next year, and it's the ODU. What if they go to Cincinnati or Kent State or Bowling Green? Do those credits go to those universities? Yes, or we've had, or wherever. Right. We've had really good success with our college courses transferring okay. to both in-state and out-of-state universities. And if they're really concerned about the course, then we would always recommend that they contact the University of Cincinnati or University of Dayton and say, this is the class I'm planning to take from Ohio Dominican. And um, here's the course description. We have the syllabus that we could send to them. And we could verify you know, that it's the same course as the one they're offering. That's usually what they want to do. They want to line it up with their course. But we've had credits accepted to all different universities. University of Pittsburgh, Ohio State, um, just all over the place. So uh, I conduct a one year out of high school survey to the students who participate in our uh, Project Jumpstart program. And that questionnaire is a national questionnaire. And it does ask those very questions. How many of your courses transferred to another university? Were they for your academic major? Did they go toward elective credits? Those questions are on the survey. And every year, students are you know, very honest. And they'll say, this counted for uh, you know, 12 semester hours. And it saved me having to take those four classes my first year. I was able to advance and take an advanced physics course. I didn't have to start a very beginning physics course. So I think they usually uh, really appreciate it a little bit more when they are in college. And they realize that it did save them a little bit of time courses while they were in high school. So it looks like most of the courses are junior, senior level courses. Um, other than, I think the principles of financial planning is at the sophomore course, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, you shaking your head. And maybe history. When do they take history? U.S. history. Sophomore. So the AP U.S. history is after they take history sophomore. Just for high school transfer. 
credits affected. It's not their college grade or other college credits. So they may get credits, just not a range of salaries or different. I think one of the other things, though, is that some of my I'm sorry, we can't hear her. She's here. saying there's some an advantage to do the AP test is more called to accept that credit. That some will, some won't for the for the people who won't say they want the college credit plus. Um, it really does depend on the school and how they handle that. So at the end, when seniors graduate, they will contact about a minute and get a transcript from them that lists all the classes, present that to the college, and the college at that point decides how they're going to handle those credits. So will they use it towards an elective? Will they use it to replace the class? Or will they not say we don't have those credits last. I believe Mr. O'Connor told me that one of to take the AP test in addition was that if you went on to graduate school, that sometimes some of those could be used to apply towards your graduate. Is that yeah. That I've not heard. Okay. But I just don't deal do with that. Just small the bachelor's degree, not necessarily. I should have guessed that that depends on how the university rates of course. So whether they consider a graduate
Yeah, we want to take this one. It's just how the traffic guidance council. Mm -hmm. oh, we did, yeah, yeah, but we did give them the list of place get. So right. they had that on the yeah. list. Yeah. yeah, and it was listed on all of the places that they're called the traffic lights. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you, but if you want to add some insurance. Sure. Okay. So I know you guys mentioned this to the students, but like are the individual guidance counselors helping stay on top of the students that they fill this stuff out or that you have the intent, or is that our job as a parent? So it's completely in our lap is to be with our student and say, we have to fill out our intent form or we have to fill out well, they, our... Yeah, they, we don't see if you fill it out or not. So then it would be you making sure that's turned in by a legal person, letting us know which ones you're going to do. So essentially, it's just the teachers at Waters and teaching, but the guidance counselors are involved in any of this. Well, we're involved in the checking and sure credits, and there's, there's different aspects that we're involved in. But um, the letter of intent that that part of right. I wouldn't know if you wanted to do it or not. You have to let them know that, that part. I just I saw we have to turn this in. And that's that's just, yeah, that's to make sure that you attend a session. Okay. Hopefully you got that counseling session that checks off that part of the list. But letting us know that's okay. I, I just have a general <laughs> question about the college credit plus program. It's not just no, it is across the state. Can take, but they can take college courses wherever they choose. That's they right. Have this, uh, That's they used to call it post-secondary option, right? and then also the normal ones. So the post-secondary option is the part where you take on a college campus, and, and that's similar to you know, sort of what it was in the past. Okay. But it's on the college oh, it was. With the I have many things to get right in the mm -hmm. Right. So at the junior parent meeting, there was some Talk of Ohio State potential. I don't even know more about that. In, in general, the way the post-secondary works here, um, if a student maxed out in a subject area, so we had students that have really advanced math, and there was no more math class to take, so then they would go to OSU, or a foreign language, then they would go to OSU. So we do the funding through that for the post-secondary and now now college That's still. Yeah. So in, in general, 
the one over here, you're really not supposed to, so buy the credit from them and then, then have it go to the school and then also take the AP test on top of that. I, that's sort of like the double dipping part, and that's a gray area, so I'm not sure how colleges would handle that, but they didn't do anything, that if you already got the credit for it once, they wouldn't open it twice. But on that, I think if you've got, if your school did the, if you go out of state and they don't accept any credits, they have the AP test yeah. that they can take to get it. That's where it would be good to have an idea of where you might want to go to college and check that out to see if that, that's transferable. You know, I would do that ahead of time. We have had uh, some colleges, some of the, uh, like, I don't think Notre Dame, uh, not sure Harvard, we have students that are there now, and that did not. So you would, I think it would be good. Most of the state schools, yes, but there are a few that they do not. You know, I always encourage students that, you know, perhaps they do want to go to an Ivy League school and they're not accepting any transfer credit. Keep in mind that the student has retained that knowledge. That is their knowledge and they're not going to have that taken away from them. And I would encourage the student to talk to the chair of that department, let's say it's the math department, and ask if they can test out of that calculus course because they don't want to take it again. They earned an A in it, let's say, and it doesn't transfer, the credits don't transfer. Well, then ask if they can test out of Calculus 1 so that they don't have to take it again and then they're ready for Calculus 2. That still saves them a course that they wouldn't have to take again at that college or that university. So they, they have a way of working with the student, but you have to be polite and persistent you know, with the chair of that department. And they'll, uh, they usually want to work with students. And so that's an option as well. And, and when you do contact schools and ask them questions about it, tell them they will have a transcript from Ohio Dominican with the classes on it. Sometimes if you just say, it's listed on the transcript, like our transcript, they don't, they'll say, no, we don't accept it. But if they get a transcript from Ohio Dominican, then that's a different story for them. So mm -hmm. let them know if they're getting a transcript from Ohio Dominican. So you have to do your intent also to not an AP class, like French 3, for example, mm -hmm. and if you're saying it's the same class, whether it's the college credit or not, why wouldn't I want to do the college credit? For that mm -hmm. level. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So the data on AP is that is different. So the honors and just the French and some of the other business classes, then yeah, that would be a way to get credit. There's no other way to, to do it. Yeah, there's nothing Go for special. It. There's right. nothing different. I mean, he's getting it no matter what. But the AP ones, like you're talking, it just has to do with um, the testing and then, okay. Thank you very much. Good question.